shape at half time because I thought they were getting too much dominance in the central area of the pitch. So we changed the shape and I think that, that worked for us. Because I thought second half we just we grew and grew into the second half and I thought we were just getting better and better. I think the subs made a difference today as well in terms of the effect of having the game, that's what you're looking for. And I think the sub the timing of the subs was good and the subs themselves, you know, credit to them made a made a big difference in the second half. And I thought latter part of the second half and the extra time we were the better side and totally deserve a win. It always felt that um I might call this, it always felt that if we got an equaliser we'd go on and win it, but did you ever start to think this is not going to come? No, oh, listen, I believe in this group of players. I mean, I'm, I get booked uh, and I'll stand by it. Tom, Tom Lawrence, I, I watch Thomas and that's how I'll be amazed if he's offside in that second one. Be amazed. I mean, we've had the ball in the net six times in the last two games. Do you know, and there've been you know, six of them's been ruled offside, so it's so frustrating. And it's just because Thomas lives on the shoulder; he's so quick, and and I think sometimes it's to his detriment because I actually the second one I'm adamant he's onside. So I always believe we'd get the goal. This team don't give up. This team, have, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This team have got something about them. They took their medicine at half time uh, because we were just. I don't think we were, we were we were poor first half because Broad didn't really cause us problems, but we just didn't we didn't get in their faces. We didn't play at our intensity. And certainly the second half wore on, and an extra time we were back. To what we are, and I was, uh, I was delighted. As you say, the players just dug in and kept going. You know, they they never gave up. But the three subs did make a difference. You know, we, we, we've talked about Jinky. We had no idea that that was Jinky's goal until full time. I think everybody in the ground still arguing over who got the, the equaliser. No, well, for me it was Jinky because it went straight in. I seen it. The keeper get caught under it and he struggled. You know, and he's palmed it. But you know, I think it's it's going in anyway. He's struggling to keep it out. But Matty Yates, you know, I must speak about the young kid as well. He's had to be patient with, with Thomas on the form, Thomas on and Daryl Duffy are in, up there and, and the experience that they bring to us. But the young kid just keeps working away and he, he's got a chance. I've said that before and I'll say it again. And his finish is excellent and I'm delighted for him. You know, he's away there in front of the TV camera, so well, that's great. That's a, that's a story of the Scottish Cup when young kids make their mark like that, so I'm delighted. I was going to say, maybe the fact there are so many cameras here, we might actually see some of these offside decisions and see well, whether they were right or wrong. Listen, I, if I'm proven wrong, I'm proven wrong, but I, I, I instinctively watched Thomas as it, as it developed because I've seen a, a, Adam Sonker going up to win the header and it's just, you know, for me he's came for the, for the safe side and he's on uh, but listen, they, they kept at it and when we came back to one each I mean, I, I cannot believe Brora I can't the word I'm looking for here is I can't remember Brora having a chance apart from real, the real penalty do you know, I can't really them working Greg Fleming and teams have not been really doing that against us you know, they've not been creating a Queen's Park aside we're restricting, we're restricting teams to limited chances, which is good. I'm going to ask you the really cliched, obvious question. Who do you want in the next round? Just been asked that by TV and radio, and, and I'm being honest here. Steer Park. Yeah. Steer Park will do me, honestly. I don't I don't even know who's through. I've not even looked at a result. I genuinely don't. So I've came straight out to speak to you guys. So as long as it's Steer Park and it's at home, I'm in the last time 16 in Scottish, and as I said, that momentum, he being in that, will help us with a league campaign as well, because we're going to need it with the, with the number of games and travelling we've got to do. But these lads are ready for it and we'll, we'll keep working away. And final one, number of games, travelling Tuesday night, you've got this trip to do all over again, but uh, probably a harder one to Elgin, given that you, you've not got the overnight stay. Exactly, listen, we've just got to, we've just got to do that. There's no, you can't moan and groan about it, every team in the division's the same. The logistics of where we are is what it is. Uh, do you know, wasn't it? It's nobody's fault that we were drawing Barora away in the Scottish Cup the Saturday before we're due to play Elgin. So that just is what it is. We'll get the players down, they'll have time with their families, so probably most of them are off on Monday as well, so they'll have good rest tomorrow and Monday. And we'll get them in Tuesday and you better believe they'll be ready again to go and play.